You're walking home alone at night. The streets are empty, unlike your thoughts. Those are racing, wondering what you'll see or hear, hoping you remain alone until you're able to unlock your front door. But then you hear it, and you know she is coming. Teke Teke. She's missing her bottom half, and yet she's faster than you, and she's about to rip you apart. Tune in to the Freaky Folklore Podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or EerieCast.com to hear more of the terror that is the Japanese urban legend, Teke Teke. Links in the description. Wendigo and freezing cold go together like... Uh, me and Funyuns, of course. A legendary and unhealthy combination. The cold makes it more difficult to continue to run while the Wendigo chases you down, ready to feast upon your flesh. Tonight, I've got some scary stories about Wendigo sightings and encounters during winter. Enjoy these tales, and be sure to send me your stories at darkstories.org. Now, let's begin. My New Year's Sighting From This Is Carrie it was New Year's Eve in 2013. My parents and I pulled up to my grandfather's house in literally the middle of nowhere in Colorado. It was a few hours away from the beginning of 2014, but I groaned. We had driven three hours to get to the one place where I had nothing to do. Sure, I could play a mobile game or text my friends on my iPhone 5, but the signal was bad up here and even sending a simple text took a while. I walked into the house and instantly went to the living room. It was my favorite place in that house, because usually nobody was in there and it had a TV that may be playing something interesting. I entered the room and was immediately disappointed. Because I wasn't alone, my uncle was sitting on one end of the couch. Plus, I hated my uncle. He never hurt me physically, but he found it entertaining to mess with my mental health. I suffered from anxiety, and his constant name-calling and slandering comments didn't help at all. You could easily say that I should have just ignored him, but I took everything he said personally. That was just the way I was. The worst part was the fact that my parents had no idea. When I tried to tell them in the past, my uncle talked to my parents after the fact, and it was all dismissed as playful banter. But for now, I was in the living room with my uncle. Determined not to let him get to me this time, I sat down at the other end of the couch, and I watched the college football game that was on at the moment. I do remember that my uncle did make a few comments, but I shrugged them off. Eventually, I pulled out my phone and started texting. Texting your boyfriend? asked my uncle smugly. You know I'm straight, I muttered back. You see, I have no problem with the gender that anyone identifies with. I have some amazing friends, a good number of which identify as many different genders, and I don't respect them any less than I would a straight person. My uncle, on the other hand, didn't respect people of other identifications, and just gave me another reason to hate him. Fine, are you texting your girlfriend then? He asked. Yeah, I replied proudly. I'd started dating a girl named Alicia a few months beforehand and our relationship lasted for a long time. In fact, we're still friends today. Really? He asked. I didn't think anyone would date your adopted fat self. I looked up at him. What do you mean by that? I asked. Oh, sorry, said my uncle with a smirk. I guess you don't know. Don't know what? I asked. That you're adopted, he replied. Very funny, I said, turning away. Oh, I'm not joking, he said. You're adopted, and I can prove it. He pulled out his phone and pulled up a picture of a document. It took me a second to recognize them as adoption papers that included my name. 
and the unmistakable signatures of my parents at the bottom. I had watched my parents sign things with those signatures time after time and I could see that they were accurate. I suddenly felt sick. I I'm, I'm going for a walk. I walked out of the room and put on my boots. 11 p.m., the clock by the door read. I'm not sure why I remember that detail, but I do. I got outside and I just walked. I didn't care where I went, I just wanted to be alone. I wandered into the woods close to the house with my phone's flashlight as my only source of light. I didn't care though. I was upset, very upset. Everything I thought I knew was a lie. I fought back tears as I picked up my pace into the thicker woods. I finally just looked up and realized I was in trouble. I turned in every direction, but the house was not in sight. I turned to my phone's map to try to find where I was, but I had no connection out here. Panic overtook my sadness, and I ran to try to find a way out. After running for a few minutes, I discovered a small clearing with a singular tree in the middle of it. I came to the conclusion that I was going to climb that tree to get a better view. But just as I began to climb, I heard a tree branch snap in the distance, and I froze. I heard the faint crunching of leaves getting closer. It could be someone else. They could help me. I don't know why to this day, but before I'd even seen what was coming, my body jumped into fight or flight. My adrenaline pumped, and I quickly went into the tree line to watch from afar. I turned off my phone light, so my only light was the moon. I heard the crunches enter the clearing, and my curiosity took over me. I peeked out from behind the tree, and I saw the outline of something massive. But somehow I could tell it wasn't a normal animal. Just the way it was moving, it was walking on two legs, but its arms hung low. It looked about ten feet tall, and the only word that I can describe it with is unnatural. Suddenly, it screeched a horrible, horrible sound. Then it left the clearing. I was horrified. I ran as far away from the clearing as I could, and somehow, I found my way back to the house. My mom soon saw me and ran to me. She told me she was incredibly worried. Unable to tell her about what I saw, I looked up and asked about what my uncle told me. That was the night I found out I truly was adopted. My parents and my grandfather were furious with my uncle, and after that night, they cut off all contact with him. New Year's proceeded as normal, I had just arrived in time for the countdown and everyone gathered in the living room to watch it. Slowly, as people got tired, they trickled out of the living room until it was just me and my grandpa. I couldn't sleep, and I knew I wouldn't that night. My grandfather suddenly turned to me. What'd you see out there? He asked. You wouldn't believe me. I replied. Try me. He said, scooting closer to me. I told him truthfully what I saw, and instead of laughing, which I thought he would do, he was totally serious with me. I've seen it too, he told me, a few times in fact, and I think it lives around here. Promise me you'll never go into those woods alone. I nodded my head to say yes, my grandfather stayed up with me that night, and even though he wasn't my true grandfather, we really grew closer. I loved that man, but he sadly passed away in 2018. I've been back to that house a few times since, but I've never seen the thing again. After my grandfather passed, someone bought the house. I hope they stay safe because they may not know what they're getting into. 
nothing really changed between me and my parents, and I still love them extraordinarily. But the terror I felt that night will affect me forever. Wendigo in Indiana Forest from Flint the Dragon 1 It was January of 2019. My boyfriend asked me to reshoot a scene of a short horror film that we had worked on for his film class. I agreed to, because the scene we were reshooting was set in the forest about an hour away, so no problem. Then again, the past few times we'd been filming there, it was full of arguing, but we were able to hold together to make a bad short film. But I still enjoyed being in the woods for a change. The last time I'd gone camping at that point, I was seven, and I hadn't really been in a forest since then. I have lived in Indiana my whole life, and I was fascinated by cryptids. I knew what we saw that day. I was the lead actor in the film, playing a man who was driven insane during a walk in the woods with his best friend. The title of the film would become ironic, but I'll save it for last. There were three of us filming, our friend who was tasked with makeup and being the camera woman and with my boyfriend and I as the actors. The only prop we had was a paper deer skull mask, and as you can gather from the prop, the film involved a wendigo. As I said before, I enjoyed the last few visits to that forest, but this time, I felt uneasy. That entire shooting session, I felt as if something was watching us, but I didn't know what it was. Later on, I began to see movement through the forest, I couldn't make it out. I told my boyfriend about it, and he jokingly said I was seeing Bigfoot. I ignored his joke, but I didn't rule out Bigfoot as being what I saw. I wish it had been Bigfoot, and I wish our camera had night mode. After finishing part of the scene, we noticed it had started to get dark, so we did our makeup quickly. My friend who was doing the makeup didn't have enough time to make it professional, but it still looked great. The bruises looked real and the fake blood had smeared great. When we got to the location for the final shot, the camera wasn't getting any light, so we opted for an audio ending to the film. As we packed up the camera, my boyfriend turned and looked into the surrounding trees, and he froze. I looked in the direction he was staring at, and our friend did the same. Through the trees, we saw a tall, lanky figure walking around. From what we could tell, it had pale white skin and long, claw-like fingers. I haven't told my boyfriend or friend about this, but I saw its face. It had sunken pits in place of its eyes. It didn't seem to have lips either, but I could see teeth. They were sharp, and it appeared to be drooling. The moonlight reflected off of something dripping from its mouth. My boyfriend said we should get out of there, and he gave me his pocket knife as we made our way back to the car carefully. As we neared the parking lot, I heard slow steps coming from behind us, like that thing was stalking us. We made it to the parking lot, and I heard it run deeper into the woods. I was the last to get into the car, and as I opened the door, I heard this blood-curdling shriek from the forest. It had an unnatural tone to it. I quickly got into the car, and we drove away. We didn't talk about it during the drive. My boyfriend was visibly shaken. We dropped our friend off at her house, and my boyfriend dropped me off at mine then went home. I told my mom about what we saw, and she asked if I knew what it was. I said honestly, it looked like a wendigo, and not the deer skull faced kind. It looked like what the original legends described, like it had been human at one point. I wanted to go back to where we saw it, but I decided against that, knowing that I couldn't fight back if things took a turn for the worse. And I'm not a small guy, neither is my boyfriend. 
but if the legends are true, we wouldn't have been able to overpower it. I haven't been in the forest since. I still have the mask. I kept it as a reminder of my encounter with that Wendigo. And as for the title of the short film we'd made, I'd given it the title the first day of filming, not knowing we would even encounter that on the last day. It's titled Wendigo Woods. I haven't seen the film, but I hope to see it at some point, just to see if we may have caught it on camera. I'll post an update on this when I watch the film and let you know if I see anything. The Wendigo That Followed Me Home From Austin C. This happened back in December 2020 in the Great Lakes region of western New York State. It was a snowy night when this event happened. I had just gotten off work and it was getting dark out already. There was a decent amount of snow on the ground while it was still coming down pretty heavily. So I thought it'd be fun to take my snowmobile out for a ride since I didn't have anything else going on. Little did I know that would be a mistake, a mistake I would soon regret. For some background, I'm a 23-year-old guy and live alone in a pretty wooded area. There are a few farm fields surrounded by woods just down the road from me. I'm good friends with my neighbors who own that land, and they let me ride on it. I went outside and the snow was still coming down pretty heavily, but that didn't deter me because I love the snow. I opened up the garage, uncovered my snowmobile, and fired it up, letting it warm up for a few minutes. I put on my riding gear and grabbed my high-powered LED spotlight for backup. Then I was on my way. As I pulled off the road and entered one of the fields, I spotted a herd of deer along the edge of the field. They took off back into the woods when I got too close for their comfort. I rode around for a few more minutes when out of nowhere I got this overwhelming urge to shine my spotlight into a patch of cedar trees. I was about 25 yards away from them. I turned off the snowmobile's engine and pulled my spotlight out of the riding bag behind me. I shined the super bright LED light into the trees. It took me a few seconds to see it, but peeking out from behind one of the cedar trees, I see what looked to be a buck with large antlers. At least, that's what I thought it was. Until I realized whatever this deer was had no eye shine like a normal deer. I could see the eyes on this deer were solid black and just empty. A normal deer would also not blatantly watch a person on a snowmobile from such a close distance. They'd run away like the herd of deer from before but this one was staring daggers at me. Another feature that really stood out about this deer was it looked taller than a normal deer. Along with being very skinny and malnourished with missing patches of hair. At first, I didn't feel any fear as I was in a state of complete disbelief and confusion as to whatever this abomination was in front of me. Then I remembered I've heard the Native American folklore stories about the Wendigo. I always thought stories about the Wendigo were just a boogeyman fairy tale to scare kids from going into the woods. This next part is the reason I still have nightmares about this creature. As I was still face to face with it, I very stupidly had the idea to yell out a question to it while trying to hold back the urge to laugh. Hey! Are you a Wendigo? Obviously, I wasn't expecting a reply. But then, I kid you not, this creature replied to my question in a deep demonic voice. It said, Yes. It then proceeded to laugh. That's when the immense fear and the urge to get out of there hit me like a freight train. I fired up the snowmobile, threw my spotlight in the riding bag behind me, and sped full throttle out of there. I almost wiped out a few times, getting back home from going so fast. I made it back in a few minutes, then scrambled into the garage. 
I parked the snowmobile and made sure every door and window was locked. I wish I could say this terrifying encounter ended here, but it didn't. Later that night after I'd gone to bed, I had a horrifying nightmare about that Wendigo. In it, I was being trapped in my house while this monstrosity was trying to break in to get me. It was speaking to me in that same voice. Austin, I can see you in there. I'm coming to get you. At that point, I woke up, startled in a cold sweat, and breathing heavily. I sat up in bed and looked around the dimly lit room. Peering in the window I hadn't shut the blinds to was that exact same monster that I'd seen on my snowmobile before, the one I'd seen in my nightmare, speaking those words that I thought were a dream. Except now, I was fully awake. But this time, while it was still staring daggers at me, it had a huge grin across its face, showing a row of razor-sharp teeth, and it was standing on two legs easily over seven feet tall. I could see even better now how much this monster looked like a rotting, decaying deer corpse. Needless to say, I screamed like a frightened child and started fearfully choking out the St. Michael the Archangel prayer, even though I'm not much of a religious person. As I was forcing myself to recite that prayer, the monster began emitting this otherworldly growl, and it laughed again. When I finished the prayer with the word Amen, the monster was just gone. I didn't sleep the rest of that night, and dreadfully waited for it to come back. But it didn't. I went and stayed with my family until I could move out of that house. And I never told anyone the story until now. Out of fear of sounding insane. Even though I'm doing better now and living in a more populated area, I'll still have haunting nightmares once in a while about that terrifying monstrosity. I avoided becoming a meal for a Wendigo. From Death Raptor. This pandemic has been really hard for me, as I can't see my friends outside of online classes. I'm an extreme extrovert. It was around 7.30 to 7.45, and it was winter, so it was already dark then. That's when I had my encounter. I was relaxing outside in my aunt and uncle's hot tub. They have a cabin up on Mount Hood in Oregon, with about one road that passes by the grounds there's tall, medium, and small evergreen pines scattered about the landscape, with white snow on the ground from a fresh afternoon snowfall earlier in the day. I was sitting in the warm water, occasionally whistling out into the dark, since I enjoyed listening to the echo it made. I was making whistling sounds like the way you call your creatures an ark. So yeah, every so often I whistled, all the while I laid in the tub. I'd eventually realized I heard nothing except the light drizzle on the roof from the cold mountain rain. No birds, no other animals, and no people, except for my family. I whistled once more, but weirdly enough, I heard what sounded like a reply a second or two after the whistle I emitted. I made the horror movie mistake of whistling again, and I got another reply. I was getting incredibly nervous, with newfound paranoia, I began to look around. My thoughts weren't fully on the darkness of the forest. I was thinking about teenage boy stuff, mostly my girlfriend and overall missing her. The thing that really snapped me out of it was another whistle. I glanced around the forested expanse, and I noticed something that I didn't notice before. A set of yellow eyes staring at me from the woods, several feet off the ground. It seemed so unreal, as the only other experience I'd ever had like this was when I saw what appeared to be a Sasquatch with my older brother back in 2013 in Gaston. The eyes disappeared, and I didn't see them again. I somehow had the courage to be outside for about 10 minutes after that, until the smart side of my brain said, dude, 
get back in the cabin. I realized I didn't hear it leave, whatever it was. I got out of the hot tub immediately and went back into the cabin, changing and coming into my room that I was staying in. That's actually when I typed this up. After looking through similar stories and researching on Wikipedia, I realized I may have just avoided becoming the mill of a Wendigo. I doubt it may have been one, but if it was, I would have just told it I was too sweet and it probably wanted something saltier. But I think whatever it was decided I wasn't worth its time and my family was inside and the cabin had large windows so they would have seen it if it tried anything. But I really don't know what to think. When I told my aunt that I was uncomfortable being outside, she thought I meant I was uncomfortable being alone outside. So if you're out past dark in the Northern Cascade mountain range, stay sharp and bring a friend. Stay safe out there, folks. Was it a Wendigo? From Parrots247. I'm 14 years old and from Western North Carolina. This story takes place near Roan Mountain, Tennessee in December 2019. I believe I saw a Wendigo watching me. It all started late night a week before Christmas. I was sitting on my porch waiting for my mom to come stargazing with me. Yeah, I know it's weird, but it's something that my mother and I have always enjoyed doing. She was in her bedroom, which was adjacent to the porch, getting dressed. I was sitting on the porch waiting for her at around 10 o'clock at night. I heard some rustling by a large bush and looked over. There, I spotted two huge red eyes around four feet off the ground. I was staring at those eyes for what felt like forever. Then, all of a sudden, those eyes began to rise. I realized what they belonged to wasn't something small, it was huge. It walked out of the bush and seemed to be seven feet tall. I'm five foot ten and I had to look up to it from about 25 feet away. It had pale skin, large claws, matted black hair and patches, and it was staring at me. Then it let out a low growl and took three steps towards me. I'm not sure if it was a he or she, because it had no genitalia but it was built like a human man. I felt nothing but fear in that moment. For some unknown reason, it just turned away and walked in the opposite direction like nothing happened, and it was just going back home or something, or to the store or something else just as mundane. Then it walked behind my great uncle's barn, and it disappeared. The next day, I went to where it was, and there were footprints bigger than my hand, but they just stopped at the barn. I still sit out at the porch at night, but haven't seen anything like it since. I'd always heard of the Wendigo, coming from Cherokee descent, although I never thought I would see one for myself. If you're ever near Roan Mountain, Tennessee, be wary of what's in those woods, because you never know what you may see.